Tony Dungy from Football Night in America joins us now. Tony, what did you see with Peyton Manning? We'll start with the first half. What did you see? Well, I, I think you hit the, the real nail on the head. Gary Kubiak, this is a different offense that they're running. And Gary Kubiak went in with the idea, we're going to have a very good offensive line. We're going to run the ball and do what we've done in the past, what he did in Baltimore last year. Run and just throw a minimum number of passes, hit some big plays. Not being able to run the ball, not protect him well. The best thing they did was go to the hurry-up stuff and get Peyton throwing the ball quick and fast. The thing that I was concerned about that I saw was not the arm strength that everybody's talking about, but the 19 incompletions. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen Peyton Manning ha- have that many incompletions, miss that many open guys. I just didn't see the accuracy that I'm used to seeing. The second half we saw a little bit more. I thought that I thought the touchdown in the first half was important for him, that he made some pretty good throws. Kansas City tried to go in and get him and, and – uh, you know, they got him a few times. I'm just not used to seeing Peyton Manning get hit back there, Tone, or sacked. Well, yeah, th- this line is not what we're used to seeing in front of Peyton. But wh- when he got going at the end of the first half, at the end of the game when they had to have scores, they were in the shotgun, no huddle. He was looking at things, knowing where the blitzes were coming from, getting rid of the ball quick. It wasn't the play action, the deep passes, that, that kind of thing. He was back in his comfort zone. And I think Gary Kubiak is going to have to rethink, Mm. how do we want to play this? If we're going to maximize, maybe we don't have the offensive line I thought we are going to have with some of the injuries. Maybe we are going to have to get back to throwing the ball quick, spreading people out, making them defend the pass, running draws and, and things like that, the things that they did last year. That's when they look their best. Denver's defense is good, and that's been overlooked, that we keep focusing, and and I'm guilty of this as well, that we have focused on Peyton Manning. How good is Denver's defense? They're they're pretty good. I actually was more impressed with them last week. I I thought Kansas City moved the ball, got in the red zone a couple times, and, and, you know, had the turnovers. And you can't always rely on takeaways, even though Denver's been getting them. They've got quick people. They've got pass rushers. They've got people in the secondary who can make plays. So that's what they're going to have to rely on. But I still want to see them play against a team that that can pound the ball. And the the big thing, boy, Denver's offense, you'd think if they can get ahead of people, now this defense can really shine because they have rushers. You, You saw not only Miller and DeMarcus Ware, but other outside linebackers come in and rush the pass. So they've got guys who can play in the secondary. So if they get ahead of people, I think this defense can be great. Tony Dungy, Football Night in America. By the way, Sunday night we have Seattle and Green Bay. We'll get to that matchup in a moment. You know Peyton as well as anybody, and I talked about could Peyton be a good quarterback? Could he be a game-managing quarterback if the team was successful? And I don't know. Having been around him, he's such a perfectionist. I just don't know if if Peyton could go out there and not be Peyton Manning. Uh, Well, you're taking away what he does best. I mean, you saw him at the end of the first half and the end of the second half. That's what he does best. But I really think if they were dominant running the ball like like Baltimore was last year with Kubiak and and you had these big holes and and were running the ball and, and having 38 minutes time of possession and I just got to make a couple of deep throws per game, I think he'd be content doing that, but I don't see them winning that way. I don't think their running game is going to be able to carry them like like they thought they would. So he's going to have to be closer to what we've seen in order for them to be a playoff team. More interesting game. I won't say bigger, but more interesting. Bills, Patriots, Cowboys, Eagles, Seattle, Green Bay. Um, I, really, Cowboys, Eagles. Um, we, we've got to see whose philosophy was right. Changes from both both people. Chip Kelly, I was there, and he t- told me about his thought process of getting rid of some of the players that they had, contract situations, money, but trying to put the best team together. And people in Philadelphia said, wait a minute, we got rid of, of McCoy, we got rid of Deshaun Jackson, our playmakers. And Chip said, well, I've got a plan, and it'll play out. Didn't look that great on offense the first week. I think they'll be better this week. Dallas, same situation. Jerry Jones, who we talked about on our show, he was an offensive lineman in college. He thinks the offensive line is the key. I can get rid of the number one rusher in football. Doesn't matter who we put back there. Our offensive line is so good we're going to be able to run the ball. Well, against the Giants, this wasn't last year's team. This was, once again, Tony Romo, 40 passes, 
20 runs. They can win that way, but it's different than what they did last year. We'll see whose philosophy kind of plays out on Sunday. The Buffalo-New England game to me is interesting because of what happened in week one with Buffalo, and they shut down the Colts' offense. Now you get the Patriots coming to town. And the importance of – because you know how Rex is going to be. If they beat Belichick and beat beat Brady, and I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> Super Bowl, yeah. <laughs> and, and we are going to find out if Buffalo is for real. I was impressed with that defense. What they did to Andrew Luck and shutting him down and shutting down some – some big play skill position guys. That was impressive. But now you've got Tom Brady. It's a different vibe. New England throws the ball much quicker than Indianapolis does. They spread it around. The pass rush isn't going to be that much of a factor. Um, they play these guys a lot. You know, Indy hasn't played against Rex Ryan and that Buffalo system so much. New England plays them twice a year. They know how to attack that defense. So if Buffalo comes out, if they shut down Tom Brady – then we're going to say they are for real and look out. I don't know if you ever had the experience of what's going on in Seattle where you have Cam Chancellor who's holding out. They lose game one. Now you have a big game on Sunday night against Green Bay. If and when Cam Chancellor comes back, do you think that there's any hard feelings there with some of his teammates that he had two years left on this deal and chose to hold out? Yeah, I actually, I've had this a couple times. Uh, Way, way, way back, I was defense coordinator with the the Steelers. Mike Merriweather was our best defensive player, and he held out all year. We ended up trading him the following year to Minnesota for a number one draft choice, but it really took away everything from our defense. Um, Not too long ago, I guess it was long ago now, I was in Tampa, Derek Brooks was our best defensive player. He felt like he should get his contract renegotiated. He sat out in training camp, but he was back before the regular season started. It's a tough place for management and a coach because you've got good players who you really you, you love these guys. And Seattle, they love Cam Chancellor. He's the leader of that group, no question about it. Uh, but he is – He's costing them right now and may cost them an opportunity to go to the Super Bowl. You lost on the road to a division rival that gave you a division loss. You're in Green Bay. If you don't win this game, you pretty much know you're going to have to go back to Green Bay in order to get to the Super Bowl. So him not being there is hurting them. Does he feel justified? He, he's looking at it. I've got to look out for my family, my security. But right now he's putting that over a Super Bowl. And that can cause some animosity. I will see you over the weekend, Tone. Thanks for joining us. Looking forward to it, Dan.